So here we are for round three of this Modern League. I'm 2-0 so far. I won the die roll. And my hand is interesting. I've got some disruption, I've got some burn, I've got a blood moon, but I've got two non-basics. So I can cast everything. But this blood moon, I'm going to need to draw a basic before it gets really good. Well, that's okay. I've got a bit of time. I've got plenty of ways to interact. So I decide to keep. And there's the option. This Sulfur Falls is going to be my turn two land because I, this Steam Benson will be my turn one land. If I make this untapped, I will have the option of casting Lightning Bolt or Spell Snare. I don't really want to pay two life willy-nilly, but against most of the decks that I want to cast turn one Lightning Bolt or Spell Snare, they're going to be dealing me lots of damage, so I'm going to rather have uh, gotten this untapped. Essentially, if I want to cast these quickly because to protect my life total, I'm going to have to pay two life, which is a bit of a paradox. So without actually knowing what I want, to, what I'm going to be playing against, there's no point in paying that life. So I make it tapped, pass the turn. My opponent goes flood a strand, crack it for a, a non-basic land. That's good to see. And serum visions, which I'm a bit jealous of because I'd like to cast one of those. I draw a sulphur falls, and I have this young pyromancer. Hmm. Now, my ideal sequence would be turn three, draw a basic island or a fetch land for the island, and slam this blood moon. So I don't really mind losing my young Pyromancer, especially against blue-white decks tend to have Pass to Exile as their removal spell. They don't necessarily have a Lightning Bolt or a Dismember or a Go for the Throat or something, that Abrupt Decay, that kills it very cheaply. Pass to Exile, I mean, yes, it's one mana, but it does put a basic into, into play for me. So if I play a young Pyromancer and my opponent has a Pass to Exile and they definitely want it to resolve, they had better be doing that on their turn, especially before I can untap and start casting spells. So I make my young Pyromancer, baiting my opponent, daring them to pass it. Well, they make a Sulphur Falls as well, and cast Serum Visions, so not ideal, but they didn't actually kill it. So that's interesting. I figure, Delver Secrets, I've got Spell Snare and Lightning Bolt, I can cast either one of those, if I, I can stop a, uh, I can stop a counter spell, or I can stop just, I don't know, a random card, so let's see what happens. No responses, I get in for two. My opponent's on 15. So going well, quarter of the way there. They make another Sulphur Falls, and I'm starting to wonder what's up. So my Delver Secrets reveals Scolding Tarn. No, not flipping, but... Ooh, I could crack this for a basic and make this Blood Moon, but my opponent's got three mana up. I'll tell you what, I'll attack, and then hopefully in combat they'll kill my creatures, and second main I can make the Scolding Tarn. Well, they're going to kill the creature, so this is good. And it's Deceiver Exarch. I hadn't thought of that. I didn't realise people were still playing that. That's alright, I can still make this Blood Moon, though. Oh, it taps my Sulphur Falls. Yeah, this isn't going so well. I'll consider... Hmm, I, might, I could Lightning Bolt this. Stop my opponent from blocking, definitely get at my creature, but I've got I can cast my lightning bolt and my spell snare anyway, so I'll I'll leave it. My opponent's definitely gonna block Yeah. Box my own paramancer, lightning bolt it. That was annoying. But at least my opponent's you know, I traded two for one against at least I've got this token, but ugh, it could be a lot better. So don't crack that scolding time because it gives me control over the Delver trigger. This 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 Delver sequence, let, let's look at the top card of my deck. If I don't want it, I can shuffle it away with, with Scolding Tarn. I don't really want to tip off my opponent that I want a basic, because they've got this Flutter Strand in play. They could get a basic off of that. I'd rather have them with no uh, no fetch lands in play when I'm casting this Blood Moon. Well, I reveal a Spell Pierce. That's good. That'll team up. Firstly, my Delver flips. Secondly, I've got ways to protect what's going on. And I tap my opponent for four, so they're on ten. So I'm halfway there. And they crack their flutter strand for a sacred foundry. So clearly after lots of colours of mana. Now, my opponent's on nine, they've got five mana on top. I really actually, I mean, I, I'm beating them down. I could just win with a damage, but I would like to land this blood moon, especially because they're only basics of mountain. This is going to be, this is going to be game over. So if I crack this for an island and electrolyze my opponent then even if it doesn't resolve it will tap my opponent down a bit they've got remand oh, okay that's okay mountain ah now this is it so I'll attack in 
my opponent's on five. And I don't have a hand of burn, so I could keep my mana up, but I'm not really helping to deal more damage. I figure I'll go for the knockout punch. I'll make this Blood Moon, keeping up Island, and then I can Spell Snare or Spell Pierce as appropriate. Blood Moon, my opponent's got only Mountains in play. Draw their card and make an Island. I think that's annoying, but they concede. So, 1-0 up. Sideboarding in this sort of a matchup. I not generally a fan of mana leak. They're good if you make a cheap threat and can protect against more expensive stuff. Uh, they're okay. I find that against decks with Path to Exile you can take out a land, preferably something like a Polluted Delta is fine, and the idea is that they can path you to exile you into more lands, so it's a bit on the sketchy side, but on the draw, against a path to exile deck, cutting a land, fine. I like to cut the blood moons. My opponent's playing red mana, and they are more likely, since I got them on that game, more likely to fetch out basics. I bring in two dispels for cheap counter wars and shadow of doubt, because it can randomly kill a fetch land. It's much worse on the draw, but it again, it draws a card. Can't do too badly. So, game two, on the draw, uh, again, this hand is unkeepable, I have no lands. I guess I didn't take out the Blood Moon. I can't remember what I sideboarded. No lands on these five. This four. Four lands Snapcaster, so Snapcaster's not at its best. But it's going to be better than any old four. And I see a Delver Secrets on top, which actually is pretty good, that's, that's a good draw. So I keep this, my opponent makes a tapped land, and I make Island Delver of Secrets. My opponent on their turn makes a basic island, and I I reveal Young Pyromancer to myself, so I don't reveal it to my opponent, of course. And I crack in for one. Now I make a Scolding Tarn, and I decide not to make my Young Pyromancer. Being so far behind on cards, I really want to be casting a spell at the same time, um, or immediately after. Crack, uh, casting this young pyromancer to get the value out of it. Any old token is going to be useful. Plus, this scolding time, as I've just said in an earlier video, earlier round, gets me control over my draws using with, between this Vel, uh, Delver of Secrets. So I reveal a Serum Visions. That's good. I'll reveal that to my opponent. I would quite like to draw that. And my opponent Path to Exiles me. Now I could not find a land, and then I'll keep the Serum Visions. But actually, I just want to thin my deck. Remember, I've only got. 17 lands total, so I've got four in if you know, four already and one coming off this path. Mm, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get the land. And I draw Shadow of Doubt. Well, my opponent's got a Pluted Delta, this might work out. So I make my island and end of turn, Pluted Delta. So, poof, Shadow of Doubt. My opponent spell snares. So I crack my fetch just to get this over with so I can F6. There's some value to being able to pass the turn without thinking. My opponent passes the turn without playing a fourth land. So I make my fifth. I'm pretty far ahead of them mana-wise. Still no spells. I'm going to snap cast this Shadow Doubt end of turn, well, end of my opponent's turn, just to get something going. My opponent casts Serum Visions. And still no land. End of turn. Snap cast a sh Shadow of Doubt. So if my opponent wishes to counter this, they're just just countering my draw a card effect that's not actually doing anything for them. They could choose to pass away Exile Snapcaster after this resolves, but it wouldn't be the worst. Now Vapor Snag is actually pretty good. Vapor Snag means I can get my Snapcaster Mage back in response to a removal spell. So attack in for two. Opponent's still on 18, and they make a Snapcaster Mage for no value. So what do I do here? I could Vapor Snag my Snapcaster, but then I'll only have a Vapor Snag in the bin, so it's not the most exciting. No, that doesn't seem the best. What I do is I trade, and then I make both my creatures keeping up Vapor Snag. So if my opponent goes to kill my young Pyromancer, I can Vapor Snag it. My opponent goes Snapcaster Mage, targeting their Path to Exile. Go to Path to Exile. So this is that trick I was saying. I can Vapor Snag my Young Pyromancer and get it back in my hand and have a token, which is pretty neat. 
my opponent in response to that gets the basic planes playing around the blood moons and path to exiles my pyromancer so it is getting pathed I do get a token at least and all I have now is an elemental and a grim lava monster so things are looking pretty grim I drew a detaxing probe which is pretty useful my opponent's got three cards I'd like to see what they are they are two Restoration Angels and an Elspeth Sun's Champion. So those Restoration Angels, they're going to be pretty useful. If my opponent draws any one land, they can Restoration Angel this Snapcaster Mage, flashback a Serum Visions or a Path to Exile. I don't really want them having this Snapcaster Mage in play. Now I could attack in and hope they block my Elemental, but actually that wouldn't give me very much action. I've got a fairly stocked graveyard. I'm going to kill it with my Grim Lava Mancer attacking one and I'm just going to make this young pyromancer. They would have to draw Supreme Verdict to punish me for this given that I know their hand is two Restoration Angels and an Elspeth Sun's Champion. They draw a Serum Visions which is interesting. I might have kept, I might have cast a, a Vendillion Fake but to each their own. My opponent draws and makes Wall of Omens and Fleet of Delta. So their hand is still two Restoration Angels and an Elspeth Sun's Champion. Well I draw a young pyromancer which is a good draw. I attack in for well, one, if we're being honest, make a young pyromancer. And the idea is this Grim Lava Mancer is just going to deal damage where it can. Now, again, I don't want my opponent having a Wall of Omens in play when they cast these Restoration Angels, and they block my young pyromancer to, to prevent two damage, but the two damage from this and the two damage from this kill the Wall of Omens. I think that was probably a mistake from my opponent. I think if they block the Elemental and taken one more damage, being able to Restoration Angel the Wall of Omens is going to prove more fruitful in, in the long run. So they crack for another basic, pass the turn. Their hands two angels and a uh, Aelspeth Solomon's champion and draw a lightning bolt. Pretty lucky. So in I go. Attack, attack, attack. My opponent casts the restoration angel. I let my opponent block. And they block the elemental this time. Not falling for that for that trick again, like the Wall of Omens with the Grumman Lava Mancer. Well, I'm afraid, my friend. This lightning bolt is going to kill your Restoration Angel. And I get two more replacement tokens. So I'm not doing my opponent damage with that, but I am building up a bit of an army. My Grim Lava Mance can go up to my opponent's face. I've got fewer cards in my graveyard now. If my opponent draws a land for this Elspeth Summons Champion, I'm going to be in trouble. I'm not going to lie. I could uh, shoot it with the Grim Lava Mance, put it to three counters, attack it with my four creatures, put it to th uh, two counters, and then shoot it with the Grim Lava Mance to kill it. But I'll be down to an elemental token and a Grim Lava Mancer. So not good. Not what I want to have happen. My opponent draws a Lightning Bolt, which is fine. And what they had drawn last turn was a Celestial Purge. So I know their hand is Restoration Angel, Elspeth Sun's Champion. I shoot my opponent to 8. Getting a bit tense. Draw a Serum Visions, which is fine. I draw a Mana Leak, and I see Electrolyze and Remand. Now they're perfect. My opponent's got Restoration Angel and Elspeth. They can't cast either of those two Amanalik, so I'm going to counter one. Next turn, which do I want? Electrolyze or Remand? Well, I figure I want Remand and Electrolyze on top to deal my opponent damage, so I, I sack them Electrolyze and then Remand on top of that. So I know the top of my deck, and I'm feeling very confident now, because I put this This puts my opponent to six, the Grim Lava Mancer puts them to four. Not sure what they're going to do, so they Lightning Bolt that. That's kind of annoying. That's going to take a turn off my clock, so I shoot them with it. But again, I know their hand is Angel and Elspeth. What can they do? I'm going to Mana Leap the Angel, attack into two. Then I've got a Remand and I can Electrolyze my opponent, whatever happens. So my opponent carries on with their turn, and they cast a Restoration Angel, which I Mana Leap. Now I draw the Remand, and I know the top card of my deck is that Electrolyze, so I attack my opponent to two, and I don't think there's anything that can happen here. My opponent still has Elspeth in hand, has drawn a Wall of Omens, so that's pretty much mathematically over. I remand the Wall of Omens, draw the Electrolyze, my opponent puts the Wall on the stack again, and I Electrolyze my opponent. My opponent says, well, my top deck are a maze. I think they've forgotten that I stacked it with that Serum Visions, but yeah, that was, that was pretty good. So, 3-0, on to the next round.